Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome to another edition of the Big Brother Slap Show, brought to you by SWORD, the superior world of reality discussion. Tonight, we are welcoming two people who are coming straight from Hearts of Reality in Celebration, Florida, from the amazing race and Big Brother, the couple known as Brencho, Brendan, and Rachel. Hey! 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 Hey, guys. How are you? We're so excited to be on Slap Show. Yeah, thanks for having us. Him. Great. We're super excited too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Cause a few minutes ago, Kayla was like, as red as she is now, and she is speechless. <laughs> okay. Aww. Like, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, you guys are my favorite. I. Yay. Well, here I'm sending you little hearts with the little hand gesture. <laughs> <laughs> I was rewatching season twelve yesterday, and that was like le seriously the best season, like by Aww, far. Thank you so much. You're so cute. <laughs> I don't know. Thirteen might have topped it. Yeah, because I did win on thirteen. Oh well. <laughs> well yeah, of course, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, but both, both were great seasons. They really, really were. Oh, so so good. what did you think this season so far? We love this season. Um, I think it, in the beginning it was started off kind of slow, but now I think we're seeing it's getting really exciting. And it's become like this crazy Big Brother soap opera, like Shelly and Clay, and then all the like Meg drama and the Vanessa drama. And I love it because I feel like there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of like, uh, stuff that changes with every single episode and you never really know what they're doing because nobody's really loyal to anyone and there's no like alliances that are actually real alliances. Well first of all let's be real. Rachel was hoping that uh, Shelly would go home and Clay would start a relationship with Meg. I really did. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I feel so Me bad. Me too. I know. Okay good. I'm glad. Everyone... <laughs> you know why? Because she wanted real soap opera. Yeah that's true. <laughs> yeah. I was definitely hoping for that too. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I was upset when Clay left. Yeah, we were we were for sure upset. And now it's like, I think the the dynamic of the game has changed a bit, and it's gonna be really interesting to watch how the rest of the season unfolds because now it's kind of like, eh, what's the characters like? What's the you know, the love connection? Where's the you know the drama gonna come from? But I think as we saw in the episode tonight. Uh, I think this whole Vanessa target is going to be like pretty crazy, so I'm excited to see how this is unfolding this week. Well, I'm looking forward to Vanessa Blindside. I mean, yeah, catching her off yeah. guard is what would be worth watching. Mm -hmm. uh, she really, I mean, I, you know, in tonight's episode, they kind of, <clears throat> she kind of alludes to the fact that she knows a little bit. She has a hint. She's a smart player. Becky is not the best gamer. No, she's so, awful. You know, she kind of wears it <laughs> her face. You know, it's, I don't know. So I think Vanessa is going to have a feeling. It's not going to be as you know blindsiding as we think, but it'll still catch her off guard a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you guys watch the live feeds? Yeah, of course. We watch the live feeds a lot, and uh, we, we've we been like following the storyline, so I don't want to do any spoilers. But, <laughs> but yeah, we've been following the storyline this week, and I think it's so crazy like what's going on because mm -hmm. it's just like, it's stuff that you would not expect. Like, I'm so glad Steve, we're seeing him on the episode tonight. We've been seeing him, like, a little bit more. And I really liked on the episode when tonight when Steve said, yeah, Becky, I am a super fan. Yeah, Becky, I am laying low. I haven't got blood on my hands. I've been doing that as a strategy. And now he wants to go after Becky. Like, I really like seeing that part of Steve because yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like we haven't seen that from him yet. And I knew that he was going to be that kind of gamer going in. But then you kind of get disappointed because we haven't seen that, well, and he, he hasn't been in the diary room. You were kind of, you know, we were all hoping for him to grow up a little bit yeah. in the Big Brother house and kind of like mature and come into his own. And I think for a while you started to lose hope that it was actually going to happen. Yeah, and like we were wondering if it was just like, did we have Steve pegged wrong? But after tonight's episode, Brennan and I were saying that we think maybe like Steve has been playing that game, but he has, if they haven't been showing it as much because he hasn't been like central to all the drama that's been going on. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I like Steve. I think he's such a little cutie. He is a cutie. <laughs> yeah, Rachel said when she did her interviews that Steve was one of her, her favorites. Actually. Yeah, I think I picked Steve to win. Yeah, did yeah. you? I think it was Steve and Vanessa that were my picks. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. We really like Johnny Mac as well. He's interesting to watch. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, we love Johnny Mac. Mac. He 
Yeah. I think all, I think all of America loves Johnny Mac. Yeah. Everyone loves Johnny Mac. He's just so different that you can't help but love him. You're like, what did he just say? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he's so funny. I know. Well, it was interesting when he first started on the show to, I don't know, I guess I kind of had to get to see him a little bit before I really, really liked him because at first I kind of was like, that voice, though. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I did preseason interviews with him, and I was like, man, he is either going to go in there and people are going to be like, what? Or I was like, maybe he'll just be totally different. But, like, I, didn't, I wasn't sure. He was one of the people I was just, I was like, they he might just evict him for the voice. But then, no, I think one of the funniest things is even when people find out he's a dentist, they yeah. still can't believe it. They're like, no, there's no way this yeah. a dentist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He can talk to us all day, and they're like, there's no way. Can you guys imagine him being a dentist? <laughs> it's like even no. in America, right? We're like, I, can't, I cannot imagine going to the dentist and, and looking up and seeing this guy <laughs> and hearing his voice, you know? <laughs> just I agree. Yeah, what's your opinion on the twins, Lizulia or whatever? Yeah, we love the twins. Yeah. And I love Aus twins. Aus twins, yeah. Austin and the twins. Oh, we love the twins. I think they're adorable. I think they're so cute. I love seeing them together. But but they're they're floaters for the most they're, part. They're they're being floaters. The one thing I noticed with when Liz was by herself or when Julia was by herself, they did a lot more gaming. But now when they're in there together, they're ostracizing themselves from the rest of the house and they're just kind of like having their own private sister time. With Austin, because Austin follows them around everywhere. Yeah. But I've really noticed that Julia and Liz have not really been, uh, they're not really... Reaching out to other reaching people. Reaching out, yeah. It's like yeah. It's like a, they're a pair, and they're just... No, they, they put know, all their eggs in one basket. They totally yeah, do. Yeah, I, I can't wait for the week to come where they get they start getting split up. Yeah. One of them needs to go. We need to see what Austin's going to do if Liz goes home. or, or I mean, I would, I would love to see Liz go home. Honestly, this because if Liz goes home, we get to see an Austin without Liz and his brain, brain all clouded with you know hormones, <laughs> and uh, and then we also see possibly maybe a Julia who seems to be a little bit smarter and a little bit better of a player. So we might actually get to see Julia, who seems to be the better player of the two, do something. So mm -hmm. it actually might be interesting if Liz goes home. So were you guys surprised that they? kind of were outed so early in the game? Yeah, yes and no. Like, we weren't surprised because as a t with a twin twist, if one person gets it, then uh, I feel like they're going to tell someone else and then everyone else is going to talk about it and then they start noticing little things. And with Liz and Julia, they, they look enough different that it's like you can kind of just tell that they're not the same person, you know? So there's enough... Yeah. To them, and I'm not talking about their whatever chubbums and and skinny yeah, mini or whatever they call them, thickums or whatever. <laughs> I'm talking about just like even their voice. I feel like is different. So I think that like for me, it it was a little bit, uh, you know, you kind of could just tell a little bit too much. Well, it's a little harder for the for the audience at home to imagine, but yeah, you got to imagine that we're in that house, and 90% of the time we're bored. Yeah. So yeah. imagine sitting around somewhere where you have nothing to do except for like just stare. At yeah. Things, you know what I mean? So you see people all the time. So you may actually be noticing something that just appears different, you know, right. because of the fact that you're just looking at people, they're in your face all the time, you know? Yeah, and I think uh, I think the twins kind of led it on a little bit too. I think they they were just kind of like... Well, they slipped a couple times. They slipped, Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't do the best job either. Right. So if 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 it had hinged on them not exposing themselves or being evicted, they would have been evicted like we want. Right. So, exactly. If that was the thing, I think I would have liked to see that as like maybe the. the if, if they got exposed before the week. Before, before week five, five weeks, they couldn't come one, in. Or one goes home. Right. Guaranteed. You know what I mean? The twin on the outside goes home when they yeah. when the house finds out. Should have done something like that because I don't think it. It didn't have the same impact either. The fact that nobody targeted these two obvious pair, you know, this obvious pair, yeah. is ridiculous. Mm hmm You know? Why not? I agree. It's like you have an yeah. obvious <laughs> Exactly. Opinion. They're going to vote the same. They're going to always support each other. They're, you're going to be inseparable. Not only do they just have some normal bond, but they have a blood bond, you know? So they're, they're not going to turn their backs right. on each other. So it, that is something that is... For like, sure. 
platinum in the Big Brother game because you don't have it most of the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, very and now cute. they have an extra person that they have to vote out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh I was just saying. No, we're gonna do this. Okay, Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> All I was saying was now they have now another basically wasted week with having to take an extra person out of the game. Right? Exactly. When yeah, they sure. could have just taken a twin out when they knew it. As soon as Devon, Devon or whatever said something yeah. and it was basically figured out, they should have they should have done something. They should have gotten Liz or Julia out. Yeah, so. for sure. And the only reason I think they stayed was because they had Austin and Victoria, uh, Victoria, Austin and Vanessa, who were like really rooting for them to stay. Vanessa made some great points, and of course for Vanessa's game it was great. But I don't understand why the rest of the house was so blinded by yeah, Vanessa. Yeah, that, that that didn't make sense. It really yeah. just didn't make sense. I mean, it didn't make sense that it took them so long to go after Clay and Shelly, and so long to go after the the twins, which they still haven't. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, but these were obvious pairs at this point. I think they've waited too long, and so now you have somebody who, like Vanessa, who's still in the game, and given enough time, a little bit further, she might be unstoppable yeah. to get to the end, in which case you're going to lose to her. So it might be the better choice now to get her out while you have the chance. Yeah, you know? we're gonna, we'll see if the backdoor plan works this week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that Shelly is a really good player, though, as well, too. She seems She's to be fairly good at the competition. Very stupid for keeping her in that house. Like, they're so yeah. stupid, for, and they deserve the house deserves exactly what they're gonna get for keeping Shelly. It's like what mm -hmm. in season thirteen they kept Lawan, or they got voted out Lawan over me, which was the dumbest thing the house could have done. I ended up <laughs> winning the game, and yeah. to me, like Shelly is this player that's like winning competitions. She has this alliance. She has people, and it doesn't. It's she's not so dependent on Clay where. She was like, oh, Clay's not in the house. I can't do anything. She was just kind of like, she she wanted him there, but she's not overly dependent on him, you know? So I think that we're going to see we're gonna see Shelly. She's being really smart. She is a good game player, I think. Well, I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. be wrong. I, I think she's strong in some competitions because watching her do anything physical, I, I don't feel like she's the strongest physical competitor in there. So there's a couple mm -hmm. competitions I don't think she, she can win this season. But... I do think that she's won enough HOHs that you should be threatened by her. So I yeah. think they should have just sent her home because Clay was the most malleable person. You could have talked him into anything, been like, Clay, I promise you, when we get out of here, you'll be owner of my farm back home. I own ten of them. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> why they would have not kept Clay. It was so dumb. Yeah. And with yeah. Clay getting in fights with everyone in the house, that was another thing. Like, I thought that that might have been his last-ditch effort to kind of stay in the house because it's like, well, they keep saying Shelly's a bigger target. Keep a target in the game. But then Clay's the one that's getting in fights with James and getting in fights with, you know, everyone right before he's leaving. So it's like... Yeah, poor Clay was on his way to become, like, a, a, somebody that would, a, you know, potential America's favorite or somebody that everybody was rooting for. And the guy just, like, self-implodes and yeah. blows himself out. And you're just like, what? Like, it's just, like, mm -hmm. so anticlimactic. And the poor guy is probably going to regret it the rest of his life. But... You know, I mean, it is what it is. Sometimes it's over, and that's it. You just got to move on. <laughs> and I don't think, I mean, I don't want to be a hater, but the chances of Clay, uh, Shlay, the chances of Clelly, whatever, lasting outside the house, I I just don't see it happening. <laughs> I I talked to Clay, and uh, I asked him, if they, I was like, yeah, well, Brendan and I were engaged when Brendan gave up his game for me. So does that? What does that mean? You guys are gonna get engaged? Like, what's what's going on? And he was just like, "Well, I don't know. Engagements are far away away. <laughs> I'm gonna take her on a date first. So to me, that just says like, well, if you're not in love. Well, no. If you didn't know inside the house, you already know. Yeah. I mean, so if if you know if if you didn't figure out inside the house, you didn't. You know, they didn't fall in love inside the house. Yeah. They're gonna fall in love outside the house. Yeah. You know on season I mean? twelve, Brendan and I were like in love. We were saying I love you every week. We were like. Like even for Dominic Danielle, yeah, they weren't like they weren't like overly for I mean overly physical or anything like intimate in the house at all. But I could already tell that they were falling in love inside the they, house. Yeah, for you sure. Know? I we knew they liked each other, for sure, hands down. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. I knew it was happening, but it was much more. It felt much more natural. Yeah. You know, not like the uh, Bates Motel with the mother in the uh, attic. Oh my god! I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, that's going to be a couple times as well. So, oh my God. <laughs> All right, so this season, obviously, no one can keep a secret. And only, like, James has balls. So why do you think everyone is so afraid to get blood on their hands? Yeah, I mean, James definitely is showing that he has balls. And even Shelly this week nominate I mean, uh, Becky this week nominating Shelly is, is definitely showing us that True. She's, you know, going after someone that she views as a stronger player, but well, I think... It's funny, because it just shifted so much, right? Yeah. At the very beginning of the game, it was all about not getting blood on my hands, you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, halfway through, people were like, hey, now it's time to get blood on my hands. Yeah. Like, I mean, I get it. Yeah, I do believe that to some degree, because it's more important for you to win stuff like the second half of the game. Right. Because it sticks in people's heads, because as they're going out to jury... You're the one who's winning stuff. So the stuff in the beginning of the game is not does not, I think, heavily impact the jury votes <laughs> as much as the stuff from like the second half on up. For sure, and you know? I I think also or week five, week five on up, I think. Yeah, I think also pairs what you're saying about why do I think that people nobody can keep secrets. I think it's I don't think anyone has any true uh, loyalties this season. I think that even with Shelly and Clay, I don't think that they had true loyalties because when they were put against each other, they were still, still like Shelly was like, oh, well, Clay, I should say. So maybe Clay had a true loyalty to Shelly, but Shelly, I mean, she was kind of still slightly throwing him under the bus so that she could stay in the house uh, to get what she wanted. And I think that, you know, we just haven't seen any, any alliances. They have these like, eight-person alliances or these six-person alliances, which all it's really benefiting is for that week because they can all say they're going after the same target. Mm -hmm. Keep talking. I'll, I'll just put it going? <laughs> oh, Sorry, Brennan, extra Brennan said he's plugging in an extra light for us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you guys just came back from the Hearts of Reality, so how was that experience? It's amazing. It's uh, Hearts of Reality is definitely one of our favorite charities, and Brennan and I love to do it. We've done it for, uh, was this our fourth year? Fourth year. This yeah. was our fourth year in a row, and it's amazing. It's You get to go to the Give Kids the World Village, and the Give Kids the World Village is so special. It's just, um, it's so uh, amazing to see what this village is doing for these families and what memories it's creating for these families. And they work with the Wishes and the Make-A-Wish um, Foundation. They give these kids their wishes, and um, these children that are, you know, uh, terminally ill or that have... I mean, there, a lot of them, you know, they could have, you know, some might be have need oxygen tanks yeah. or need, you know, may have different tubes coming out of them. So it's like even that alone is very tough for anyone to take care of. Mm -hmm. uh, so Give Kids a World not only puts them up but provides, like, the health care as well with nurses and staffers around the clock. They even give time for the family, like mm -hmm. the parents sometimes to like get away and do their own thing for a little bit, just to have a little bit of a break. Yeah, and it you know it's really cool because um when you go it's the village feels like a magical fairy land or like a you know, like a fantasy it, land. It, like, it literally feels like like remember the game the board game Candyland? Yeah. It feels like a giant candy land. Like it everything does. just reminds you of Candyland. Yeah, and it's just so great for the families to just go and they and we were talking to some of the families even this week. I mean, every year it's the same thing, but this week they were like, you know, it's just so amazing for us to get out of our lives for a week and not have hospital appointments and not have, you know, to worry about chemo and not have to worry about needles and not have to worry about anything. And we just come and, you know, the it was this one little girl in there. Like, she wakes up every morning and she's like, can we go get Sundays from the ice cream shop? And, like, they have 24 hours. Yeah, it opens hours at 7 a.m. Yeah. and closes at, like, 11 p.m. So they can get ice cream so, any time of the day. Yeah, breakfast, ice cream for breakfast. Yeah, and then they, they have, like, a cafeteria open for them all day. And it's just such an amazing organization. And I feel like Brendan and I, every year, we're so lucky to be um, a part of it. This year, the Hearts of Reality, we raised over $139,000 before we got there, and wow. then we raised, I think, an additional, I heard an additional tw at least $20,000 really? while we were there. Yeah, because we raised the 10000 or like ten wow. or $15,000 at the autograph signing, and then they raised more money at the party, and then more money from donations that were continuing to come in. 
So wow. we might have raised one hundred sixty thousand, one hundred seventy thousand. We're not really sure yet, but I mean, it's just been it's just amazing. You know, they said the first year we raised sixty thousand dollars. So to raise almost a hundred thousand more four years later is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that is you know, and then we have a we have a party every time we do it, and Rachel yeah. dressed up like uh, Ariel from oh, The Little yeah. Mermaid. Uh -huh. And then, I mean, not like the entire costume. She just had like a. I wear like a sequin mermaid gown, so yeah. I don't wear like fins or anything. But I wear the sequin. Uh, it's a sequin sequin mermaid gown, and it's like blue and green, and it look it looks like something Princess Ariel would have worn. Yeah. And yeah. then I wore this like mermaid crown, and I had my hair all big and red, and like with the bangs and the makeup, and so. These and I also two, gave her a uh, little mermaid. Necklace yeah, he gave me a little mermaid necklaces, <laughs> and so these two girls. This is the best story ever, you guys, and. It's amazing. Okay, so this one girl, um, Princess Malia, we call her. We call them all princesses. She um, was so sweet, and she's one of the Make-A-Wish kids. And um, I came over to her with a necklace because Brennan had given me some necklaces to hand out. It had a little octopus on it. And I was like, hi, um, princess. I have this treasure that I brought from you from King Triton, and it was from the special treasure chest under the sea. Flounder told me to come give it to you, and it was from King Triton's personal treasure. And so um, Portia was kind of hanging out with her the rest of the night, and she, Portia told me that the rest of the night this little girl went around telling every she wore the necklace and went around telling everyone. And this girl could not have been more than maybe like four years old, five years old, telling everyone Princess Ariel gave her this necklace. It was from King Triton's treasure, and it was just the cutest thing. I It really, like... I don't want to cry in front of the kids, but, like, I cried after. Uh -huh. And then this other really special little uh -huh. girl, she was just, oh, my God, following me around the entire night. I gave her a necklace. She asked me to sing for her, um, which I'm not a good singer. Yeah. But, of course, what do you do? What, I mean, when they're, like, sitting there and they're, like, please sing for me. And I'm, like, oh, of course. So I start singing for <laughs> her. And it was so adorable. So then... I sang for her and I gave her a necklace and then I was like, Sebastian and Flounder told me to give this to you. And she's like, how is Sebastian? And I was like, oh, he's great. He's under the sea. And she's like, can you sing for my grandma? And she went and got her grandma. She's like, can you sing for my brother? And she went and got her brother. And then we danced and I was like, thank you for teaching me how to dance. You know, these and my feet are new and I just haven't ever really learned to dance. It's on, I'm trying to learn how to walk on that. What's that word again? Oh, street. So I just like totally yeah. played into like the whole movie, and uh, the little girl like really thought I was Ariel. She was like holding my hand the entire night, walking around with me, telling everyone that I was Princess Ariel's her new best friend. I invited her to a party under the sea, and that like, I mean honestly, she couldn't. It was the cutest thing. Like her mom kept telling me, she's like, um, if you're gonna dance with her, hold her hands because she can't stand up on her own, um, and she like literally she couldn't walk. So when we were dancing, she would just kind of jump up and down. It was really cute. And um, her mom would be behind her just in case she would fall or anything. But I would hold her hands, and it would just, like, made her day. She's like, I'm dancing with Ariel. I'm dancing with Ariel. And, like, it was honestly that alone for me was the reason that I go to this. Because I, I can't – I'm, like, getting teary-eyed right now. <laughs> I can't even explain, like, just the fact that she, I mean, she got her whole family, and I sang for the whole family, and this little girl, she was just, like, in, she was so excited, She and her mom told me and pulled me aside and said, you know, she hasn't stopped talking all night about Princess Ariel, and she hasn't stopped talking about how Ariel invited her to hang out with Sebastian and Flounder at a party under the sea, and, uh, She's like, she just really, like, she's like, she hasn't been this excited in such a long time, and she's like, thank you so much, and it was just, ugh, to hear that from the mom, it was just so special, and uh, it was just, I mean, it was amazing. Like, the whole, the whole organization is amazing, but the fact that that kind of, like, I have those two individual stories, but with the little girls, it's just... You're, I mean, yeah. it doesn't then, get any better then, right. than that. Well, let's not get to, yeah. I don't want to get too emotional. But, <laughs> and then all in all, not only is I, I mean, not only is that that amazing, but all the money we raise, ninety three percent of it goes directly back into the place. So give kids a world. So it's not, it doesn't go to pay these over, you know, these these CEOs or CFOs or you know, which guys that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
it goes directly back to the yeah. organization. So it really is one of those organizations that you know you can see the impact of your money. Yeah. And if you ever go to uh, if you ever go to Disney World, we've always been encouraging people try to take an extra if day. You go to Orlando, yeah. Yeah, Orlando. Go volunteer there just for like uh, you four or six hours. Like it'll change your life. You can um, sign up online at the GiveKidsTheWorldVillage.com. And you can go in, so if you're in Orlando on vacation or if you are, you know, traveling to that part of Central Florida, you can just go for, like, a few hours. And, I mean, honestly, everything you can do helps. Like, they have, like, a little magical, like, tree village, and they have, like, arts and crafts, and they have, like, you know, a merry-go-round that needs operators, and they have, like, the ice cream scoopers they need. So whatever you can do, like, for just even for a few hours, they said they need people to paint, and they need anything yeah. they can get. I mean, they have, like, 200 volunteers there a day. Yeah, and they so, have... And they are, they're open 24-7. 20 like, families go move yeah. in a day, and 20 families move out to the village a day. They're there for seven days, and 20, 20 each day. Seven days? Seven days, yeah. Oh. 20 move in, 20 move out every single day, and they told us that it's, like, about five thousand dollars per family. Yeah. And um, so I mean, the money that we raise really, you know, that that's a big deal for them. Yeah. Wow, that's so great, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then not only is it just that, but uh, we we act, like at night we did last night we go karaoke. So we every mm -hmm. you know invite all the fans to come out. You can buy tickets and it, it goes directly to the charity. And then we do karaoke. Uh, I serenaded Rachel last night and sang "My Girl." Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> and, and it's cool, like, we get to hang out with our friends. Like, uh, Janelle came this year. That was her first year. And um, my sister and Portia and Andrew Gordon and uh, Amanda Zuckerman was there. So it's like a big big brother family, like Victoria, Nicole, Donnie, who else went? Um, Derek, Cody, Zach. I mean, it was just, like, it's a big, like, a great place to just hang out with everybody. There was people from Survivor, Amazing Race, Bachelor, uh, you know, every reality TV show, but, I mean, the reason that we're there is obviously for the Make-A-Wish Village, or the Give Kids the World Village, and... It's for the kids and the families, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Sorry, we, we, we got really deep yeah. into it. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay, that's, that's amazing, and I love hearing everything you guys have to say about it, because I really didn't know a lot about it. Well, and that's gonna so, what we want to do is like we that's why I enjoy talking about it is because I do it's some it's something that if you ever go and see you're just like how did I never know this was here yeah you know what I mean because you're just like <laughs> wow like there are a few good things left on earth and give kids a world definitely is one of them it's really special so yeah wow that's so great you guys yeah. I hope I get to make it one year you yeah you that. should yeah. anytime you're impl I mean and like Brendan said like. Just plan an extra day or an extra few hours, and you know, go out there, and they they love the volunteers and appreciate the help. Yeah. Well, maybe after I get on Big Brother Canada, I'll go there and no. I'll Perfect. join you guys. Exactly. <laughs> Liza was there. Liza was there. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. That's awesome. Yeah. We call we call them our Big Brother Canada cousins. Yep. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my friends told me to ask you all, I mean it's obviously obvious that y'all have kids, so like in the future, do you guys plan on having kids? Absolutely, we totally want little babies, <laughs> babies. Yeah. we're for sure definitely, uh, you know, trying, we'll see, we don't know when it will happen, but. Yeah, we, ju we just, we had just officially started trying. So and even in trying, we like we're like okay, Aww. let's do our homework to know like what should we be eating and drinking when we're trying to have a baby? Like you know, should there things we should stay away from? And you know, it's very complicated. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> it's a lot of learning. That's that's so funny, Parish, because my mother-in-law asked me the exact same question like two hours ago to ask you guys. <laughs> that's she so was funny. like, you guys. Because, Rachel, when you guys were on the show, you were always talking about how you wanted to have little babies with Brennan. <laughs> and uh, she was like, where are the babies? <laughs> I know, I know. They're coming. Right now we just have our little baby pup Ben's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's big enough for us now. He's yeah. 90 pounds Rottweiler, so you know, he's a big boy. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I have three babies, and it's lots of fun. Oh, it yeah. is, right? <laughs> I do think yeah. everybody who wants to become a parent should be required to own a, a pet animal. They should. Uh, you know, just to get 
early lessons. Well, I had a pet animal before I had my kids. It was a little, little tiny chihuahua, and his name was Winston. Oh, so, that was my pet. <laughs> so cute. But yeah. Um, so I was watching a video the other day of Julie Chen on um, Entertainment Tonight. And she was saying that what she was really hoping for was a season of all of the winners from Big Brother. So it's like the winner circle season of Big Brother. If that was to happen, would you do that, Rachel? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I would love to play with against some of the winners. I just don't know how exciting that kind of season would be for everyone because I can only imagine <laughs> that... Uh, it's, it would be very complicated. I think it would be better if instead of just winners... Well, let's winners, be honest. The winners aren't always the most entertaining for Yeah, the show. exactly. That's just plain and simple. Yeah. There's some great winners that are very entertaining. There's some other winners that are super boring. So, I mean... I think I would you know, rather see an all-star season before an all-winners season. Um, but yeah. I think that... I think, like, a Legends versus All-Stars, that's, like, that's kind of one of my dreams. I would love to see... You know, a season with like Will and Janelle and, um, you know, make me and some of the other, um, you know, all stars like obviously my sister and Brendan and. Um, yeah, I could, not, I could not be in a house with the two of them. It would be bad news. <laughs> and, and bring Dan all, Geese like all, all I would be doing for the entire duration of Big Brother was trying to win competitions and bring him fights between her and her sister. You would. We would not fight. We would be in... Yeah, right. Uh, it would Your be the, sisters. What would, sisters do not fight? It would be like the Oz twins, but it would be the... What would they call us? The brunch. Yeah, but the twins. They're like, sisters? They're like I don't know. almost one person. True, true. You know? They're one person that got split in half. <laughs> so they don't count. They're, they're different. Yeah. Well, I was definitely hoping for an all-star season for... Uh, this season that's going right now, season 17. I was crossing my fingers. We need an all-star season yeah. so bad. I know. I, I, I so agree. Bad. I think an all-star season would be fun. Well, here's the question. If they have an all-star season, are they still, are they trying to reinvent a lot of competitions so they're, so everyone's not as yeah. prepared for it? You know, I would, that would be my request. Because yeah. I don't want to yeah. go on feeling like that we're all in the same playing field from, yeah. from this get-go, you know? I don't want to think that mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go back and watch every single season again just to get the gist of what could potentially be there. I would rather mm -hmm. have like, some newer competitions that are kind of new and people could be unprepared for. Right. You know? Yeah. And see, that's the thing, that's the thing too, with this season, it seems like they are recycling a lot of the uh, old competitions. Have you guys noticed that a lot? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, they, they do that a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, some, there's some, I think it co just comes down to us getting annoyed by the ones that we don't like as much. I mean, there's some competitions mm -hmm. where they're great because they can claw, draw a clear divide between who really is good and who really is not good, and if they're throwing it, they, it's easy to see, you know, so there's mm -hmm. different kind of competitions. But, yeah, it's just the predictability factor. I like to have a certain amount of unpredictability because I think that makes for a little bit better TV and just better Definitely. in general because... You know, it's I really like that dance competition HOH. That was cool. See, I hated that. Really? I hated I that it. dance. Oh, it was <laughs> I, was, I was a big fan of Inland Poet. It was like, man, it was bad. Yeah, I loved bad. it. Um, well, hey, girls, we have to go get our little puppy from our grandparents, from his grandparents' house. Um, they're staying, he's in Riverside. Uh, but we love talking to you guys. Do you have any other questions for us or anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Uh, oh my god. I had like a huge list. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. We oh, talked okay. That's long. okay. No, we do. Um, Let's go through that. Let's see how many we can get through real fast. We'll go we'll, we'll, okay. we'll do quick answers. How about that? Quick answers. Okay. Paris, did you want to say a question? Yes. Okay. Okay, what is the biggest mistake that Big Brother's house guests make? Like, what do you think is their biggest mistake? Uh, overthinking the game, being paranoid and overthinking the game. Yeah, I mean, overplaying, just going too hard, too fast. That's. I can't answer when you're talking over me. <laughs> <laughs> so, what has, what was your most memorable moment in Big Brother, other than meeting Brendan? Yeah. Um. Gosh, most memorable moment. 
Um, winning the first uh, Banana HOH for season 13. Uh, for me, I think it was walking out on stage on season 13 and realizing that Rachel was in the final two. Because I saw some fans yeah. signs and they were like, go, go Rachel. I was like, she's in, because at that point we didn't, I had known if she was in the final two for sure. So oh, that, that would point, be amazing. Yeah, it's very memorable for me. So, so like, um, <laughs> Paris, did you want to say another one? Uh, my last question will be, who are you two rooting for to win this season? Um, I'm rooting for, well, I like Vanessa. She's a bit crazy, but I like, I think she's running the house, and she's played, she's the only one that's played the game consistently throughout the season. Um, I'm rooting for Steve, and of course, Johnny Mac. Everyone loves Johnny Mac. I love yeah. Johnny Mac. Yeah, I think uh, same answers. Like, we are all rooting for Johnny Mac. He's the obvious, like, pick. Yeah. Uh, I do think I, I am still rooting for Steve heavily. I want to see Steve grow and kind of develop and, and turn in this character that we are all proud of at the end. And if he wins mm -hmm. Big Brother, it'll be, it'll be reminiscent of Ian Terry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, how did each of you guys apply for Big Brother? Did you send in a video or did you go to casting call? Were you recruited? I went to, Rachel, I went to, I don't know why I said Rachel. What? I don't know. I went to open call. Oh, Rachel, um, yeah. Rachel went to open call. Rachel went to open call. <laughs> I recommend open call for everyone that wants to get in front of a casting producer. I think it's the best way to go. Uh, I was recruited. I was out with a friend, and somebody told me about this show, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. And long story short, I told them no, <laughs> and they called me up two weeks before the show. So then that's how it, it was fate. So stars align. That's awesome. Okay. And then um, what, ha what was your favorite season of Big Brother? Other than yours both. <laughs> 12 and 13. 12 or 13. Um, gosh, yeah. season, favorite season. Season 7, I still go with the All-Stars. It was just a great season. It was fun to watch Janelle. It was fun to watch all the gameplay. Um, yeah. You know, I think that back then it was a different Big Brother game than the the seasons we're seeing now. So I think it was it was really fun to watch all those people come together and, and really battle it out. Yeah, I, I haven't seen every single season, so it's hard for me to say, like, you know, there's certain seasons... Because I do know certain people from seasons, but uh, all in all, I, I probably would agree with Rachel. I think having played the game, I think I like the All Stars because it was. It did seem having a bunch of people in the house who knew how to play the game. I feel like you start on a more level playing field, you know. Because in normal Big Brother, there's people that have no idea what they're doing, so they're a huge deficit right when they go in the door. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So if, it, if everybody knows what they're doing, it might be a little bit more enjoyable to watch. So yeah, I think probably season seven. That's great. Okay, I have, like, one more question quickly. Yes. Who, what, who is, like, the greatest friend that each of you guys have made other than each other in Big Brother? Uh, well, my, you guys gain my sister played, too, so I have to say her. But <laughs> Alyssa Riley Slater. No, but, uh, no, my greatest friend would be Portia, Portia Briggs, and I know Andrew's, uh, Brendan's pick. Yeah, Andrew Gordon from season yeah. four. He was but in, I our, mean, in our wedding. He's yeah. he's he's a very good friend. We're, they're really good friends. Yeah. Both Portia and Andrew are great friends. Uh, but I mean, like we say, you know, we're we're great friends with like Matt Hoffman. We're great friends with Janelle. We're you know, I like mean, Matt Hoffman married us. Yeah, you know that, I mean? yeah. So I mean, it's so. like we're real, really good friends with a lot of people from our seasons. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we just want to thank great. you for coming. We are oh, so no, happy we finally got to talk to you. Thank you. Uh, is there anything you want to I'm say? I'm super to excited. Promo where they can find you on Twitter, Facebook, or anything like that, websites. Yeah, at Rachel E. Riley on Twitter, at Rachel E. Riley Viegas on Instagram. And, um, yeah, just keep up with our lives through Twitter. We're, we're really good on Twitter and Periscope. Yes. I'm at Brendan V BB 12 I'm still keeping it real. Uh, I am. <laughs> that is my uh, handle for everything. So Periscope, Instagram, uh, all of it. So, yeah, we've been Periscoping a lot. So we recently got into that, and that, that really is, uh, yeah, if you guys want to follow us, um, we do some interesting stuff. So I <laughs> once took my Periscopers to the Playboy Mansion. Yeah. So, <laughs> really grateful. They were. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you as well. 
You guys yeah. are my favorite, and I freaking love you. And this has been like the exciting moment, like for me. Yay! <laughs> so thank exciting. You, so, you're so cute. Thank yeah. you. And thank you. I <laughs> really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out for us. So of course, yeah. you guys are the best. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll definitely do it again. Thank you. Yay. I hope so. Yay! Bye, girls. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Wow, that was awesome. Yeah. Okay, so do we got anything we want to talk about for this week? Um. Oh, God, I have a lot of stuff to talk about. Jesus Christ, let me go back to my notes. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> This week was a lot of crying between Meg, Shelly, Vanessa, I guess pretty much all the girls mm -hmm. in the house. I don't know why Meg mm -hmm. was crying over Clay. I didn't even realize that they were friends. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just really tired of it. But I'm glad Becky's HOH and that she wants to backdoor Vanessa. I don't care which one goes home. I'm just glad it's going to be either Shelly or Vanessa. I agree. I I don't know. I would rather see. I think I'd rather see Shelly go than Vanessa. Like Vanessa is so emotional and whatever. But I don't. I don't know. It's just. I think that like Brendan and Rachel were saying, the longer she stays in the house, she's gonna freaking get to the end all of a sudden, and she's gonna be the winner this year. So yeah. I guess if if. if I guess if that's what people want is her to make it to the end, good for her. But I would like to see someone else win. Yeah, I don't know what's up with Clay and Austin giving up $500,000 for a girl. Like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Austin says he's in love, which I don't understand. Maybe it's just me, but I don't, I don't get it. Like, I would not give mm -hmm. up. That I wouldn't even give up second place. You know, that's what fifty thousand dollars. At least that's something. I would never give that up for someone I met mm -hmm. in the house. I would just say, "Hey, I'm trying to win the game. Let's see if we can work this out once the game is over." But while we're in that house, like you're my enemy, and I'm gonna do what's best for me. Um, yep. <clears throat> I agree. I I'm still like. It sucks that Clay went, but I'm still happy that at least Clay and Shelly got separated. Mm -hmm. And now we'll see, I guess, how it plays out. Frick, I was hoping that, like, Julia was going to win and then, like, take out Austin this week. I thought that would have been awesome. Did she do that? I, I think she would. I definitely think she would contemplate it. I don't think Julia likes him very much. So... Yeah, she him last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. The guys had some drama this week. Clay and James. I was so shocked because James is so small. I know. Clay is so big, but I don't know. He just, like, went straight up to him and was like, you need to keep my name out of your mouth. And I was like, yes, James, put them paws on him. So I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Stupid! Like, how did he come up with... Like, he told Vanessa <laughs> that James went to Johnny Mac and was like, uh, Vanessa's in Shelly's head. I don't know how he came up with that. But... Mm. I don't know. I know. I thought that was awesome. It was about freaking time that somebody was going to get in someone's face, though. So we don't mm. see that very often anymore. I know, because so. they're all... Geez. I know. I couldn't believe that Becky won all three of the rewards. She got I H2H, know. she got the Never Have Not, and the $5,000. I was like, holy snap. But I think that they made it pretty easy for that, though, because all three of the balls came to the very top. So all she needed to do was go back and forth and back and forth. And from what I saw, it didn't really see that looked like anybody was all that close to yeah. getting to the top when she got there. So, yeah, I was surprised that she was the one who dominated in that uh, 
that competition. Why is Meg uh, there? Like, she's not good at competition. <laughs> oh, I'm, my God. That's how she gave me either. I know. And she legit, like, went so slow. She, <laughs> by the time people were on their two, second, third, fourth time going back and forth, putting the gas in the yeah. bowl, she was still getting there for the first time. I was like, wow, someone wants to win. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you think she does it on purpose, or she's really just that bad? I I, I don't think it's on purpose. <laughs> I think that she's just that bad. <laughs> I think that, I, I, yeah, I, that's it, yeah, that I gather from her. I don't think that... Uh, I just no. I I just don't get anybody really that would throw an HOH competition. But for mm -hmm. her, I don't think she's throwing it. I think that she like legit is just like slow and weak and yeah. <laughs> so are, is the other side and an alliance? You know and what do I'm they saying? they have a name? Because last Thursday, Julie kept calling them James and his crew. So do they have an official name? Or are they even aligned? An official name? Mm-hmm. Yeah? What's the name of it? Uh, probably. Okay. I don't know exactly what it's it is. It's Dark Crew, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is. I think so. I think I read that on a spoiler page that there. No, well, that was a bunch of people. Was it? I thought so. It's not. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have. You know what though? Just like Brendan and Rachel were saying, this season really hasn't had very solid alliances that I've really been completely following. Yeah. You know. What about the six cents? So, well, yeah, I guess other than the six cents, but look how fast that kind of blew up with everybody, though, because they were going to get Austin out, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they didn't, but still, it was it was pretty friggin' close to them taking him out. So, and now Clay is gone, so that's one person that's gone from there. I don't know. Yeah. I will say this season has gotten better. At first it had died down a little bit, but it's getting, mm -hmm. it's getting better again. Vanessa, mm -hmm. I don't know. I used to like her in the beginning I did, but now I'm just not really liking her as much. Like, she gets mad at Shelly for like doing the same thing that she basically did. Shelly threw her under the bus, she threw Shelly under the bus. It's like they're both mm -hmm. doing each other, so how can you be mad? And she cries like every five minutes. I know. I'm in the same boat. I really, really liked Vanessa, but I, I also, I said this before too, I thought she would have been a lot of a like tougher girl that, like, wasn't going to take no crap from nobody, wasn't really going to be that crying, sobbing girl that she tends to be. Yeah. And, yeah, I just didn't really gather that from her when we first saw her, so I'm kind of surprised at how emotional she is. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But I think that, I think that, like, with any season of Big Brother, as the cast gets smaller, we get to know the cast better, and then we start to know exactly who we like, you know? Yeah. Or at least that's how it is with me. I saw Steve but. tonight. I know! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about him either, but... Spoiler alert, he is good at competitions because he won the POV. So. Yep. 
I understand his strategy. If I was in the Big Brother house, I'd do the same thing, float, because floaters seem to make it far in that house. So I actually can't be mad at him for that. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, uh... Yeah, it definitely, we definitely saw a different side of him tonight, for sure. I, I did, I did at least. Um, because, yeah, he's always so quiet and, like, laid back. He seems like such a sweetheart, except for when it comes towards Becky. He's kind of an arse towards Becky, but, you know... Yeah, I, I hope that he comes into his own and he starts winning competitions and he becomes this, like, all of a sudden big, badass, mm -hmm. crazy, big brother competition or competitor, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, my God. Because he is, he's a super fan, so he knows we're, like, waiting for him. He's got to, like, pull it out and do some crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have got to ask you. I really want to know your opinion. Yeah. Last Thursday when Play was connected and he did his interview with Julie. He kinda confirmed yeah. that Matt was a whore. So like <laughs> I had this conversation with Shady also. So like yeah. I think she's a whore or she's just I don't know. I personally think she's a slut. I was, like, my mouth dropped, as did Julie Chen's, when he had said, well, Meg's kind of been with everybody in the house. Like, yeah. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised. I didn't, I didn't think that she was. Maybe I don't watch enough of the live feeds, but I definitely gathered from her that she wanted to definitely have a relationship with Clay, but apparently it wasn't enough because she didn't even keep. She didn't even vote for him to stay at all, right? And didn't he say he couldn't wait to hang out with her, like outside of the house or something like that? I think they might become a couple because him and Shelly aren't gonna make it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, but that's the thing, too, is, like, Julie Chen asked him if their relationship was real and if it was going to keep progressing out of the house. And he hesitated, right? And then he was like, yeah, that they were going to keep trying. But honestly... They're going to get out of the house, and she's going to want to have a baby and get married, and he's going to want to go out and get drunk and go party because he just freaking got off a big brother. Well, mm -hmm. I guess he'll be able to get all that done while she's still in the jury house. But still, I don't think that he's ready for that, but I think she's, like, right around the corner from there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I know in the, in the beginning her and Jeff kind of had a thing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if she tried to hit on James or if she just went that steak dinner, but for a minute it was kind of him, and then it was Clay. Like, is Johnny Mac going to be next? Because you know that's Becky's man. So, I don't mm -hmm. know. <laughs> I don't know either. I don't know where she's going to go, where Meg's going to go. I don't even know really what Shelly's going to do. Like, I think this is going to be, like, a week of mental breakdowns for Shelly. <laughs> now she's like all alone. She doesn't have her main man. You know? <laughs> Interesting. Oh my gosh, Kayla. One of my friends is watching and he says we're over here gossiping. We're not gossiping. We're telling the truth, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're girls. We're allowed to gossip anyway. This is what we That's do. That's how we roll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so this week's uh, POV, was it Recycle? Yes, it was. It's like those competitions where you got to throw something and like, get a high number. Do you remember it, Caitlin? 
it was like the Game of Thrones or something like that, and they had like uh, Shelly won that punishment where she had to do the sword thingy. Oh, yeah. Okay, I didn't know if we were talking about this week or last week, so I was going to say I don't even know what this week's POV <laughs> was. I didn't pay that much attention yet. Um, and it won't be on the show until Wednesday. Um, yeah. But last week's, yeah. It, it, I, I think, was it that day? No, it was Thursday that I had messaged you saying that it was another recycled yeah. uh, competition. But, yes. And then... But I, I don't know. I liked how they had the punishments, though. I was laughing when Vanessa was sitting there um, shining the armor on Jackie. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. And then uh, I can't even remember what it was else. Oh, yeah, Clay got a trip to Ireland, was it? Yeah, he did. Yep. And then... What was there was five thousand dollars too, wasn't there? I want to say was Becky there? got it. Yeah, I think Becky got okay. that too. So now she has ten thousand dollars. Was Becky in the POV? She was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, yeah, and then Shelly had that punishment. That would have sucked. Seriously, <laughs> and imagine if she would have done. All of that, and then got evicted. Oh my I God! I wanted that to happen. I wanted mm. that to happen so freaking bad. Well, like, that's oh, the nothing. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought of when she got that for a punishment. I was like, "Ha, huh, that sucks." Cause you're gonna do this twenty. What was it? Twenty five hundred times, and then you're just gonna get evicted anyway. But uh, apparently it worked out for her, so she's good. Clay's stupid for telling them uh, to vote him out. I still don't understand him or Austin. So mm -hmm. at least we got to see Derek and Cody this week. Oh my God, Cody is fine. Ooh, Jesus. Ah, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I, I know. I love seeing them and their families together. That was so cute. Derek's daughter is freaking adorable. So cute. She looks just like him, too. I know. <laughs> like, could you imagine that? Like, one minute, you're going on Big Brother, and then three minutes later, you're coming home to your wife and daughter with a freaking $500,000 check. Or I guess with taxes, it would have been, like, smaller, but... You know, it's just crazy. It would be amazing. I know. But, yeah. Hopefully we make like, the Big Brother Canada house. Because I know for sure I, know. I can, like, interview you and, like, we can, like, hang out and stuff. <laughs> I can be like, hey, I know her. <laughs> I know. Frick, I would, I don't even know. But we're, we've are we only got 100,000, like, how chintzy is that? Frick. But don't y'all get like a like a shopping spree at the brick also? Oh yeah. Like a gift uh, card or something. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I think it was like a ten thousand dollar shopping spree. Mm -hmm. And then like a trip of a lifetime. Oh still, yeah. I, I would I would rather have five hundred thousand dollars. Thought I'd throw that out there, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> it's all about the experience, right? All um, about the experience. <laughs> so, what do you think of Becky's plan to backdoor Vanessa? Yay or nay? Um. I don't. I can't even answer that because I don't even know. A little mm. bit of yay and a little bit of nay, because I would like to see Shelly go, but I guess I would rather. I would like to see either of them go. Yeah, but you no, know, it is double eviction, so maybe both of them will go. Uh, yeah, I must have missed that. It's double eviction on Thursday. Julie said it last Thursday, yeah. 
Well, snap. Look at that. <laughs> Maybe we will see them both go. Frick, where was I? I didn't friggin' see this. Kaylin, oh, no. my God. That's awesome. You're, like, burning up. So the only thing you can focus on is, like, getting some air in your house. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully we see some, yeah. That would be awesome if both of them went that night. But yeah. it's about freaking time that they did something crazy because they really haven't had the greatest twists this year. I haven't seen right? a twist in so long. Like, mm -hmm. the last twist I saw was Julia entering the house, which wasn't a twist at all because everyone no. much knew that. Mm hmm. I don't know. Yeah, everybody knew it was going to happen anyway. They just didn't exactly know when. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they're they're lacking on the twist situation this year. And I would like to see a twist. Well, I guess we're going to see the double eviction. That'll kind of be a twist. But it still doesn't compare to the Canada triple eviction. I know. That was freaking epic. <laughs> twist. America doesn't have enough twists. Like, we need to find... A balance somewhere. Yeah. But seriously, like, you can't make everybody happy. And it seems like no matter what, if there's too many twists, there's people that are all like, oh, there's too many twists. And then where there's not enough twists, everyone's like, oh, there's not enough twists. Everybody's got something to freaking say. Yeah. So at least do a few twists. Do something crazy. Not overly too many where we're like, whoa, what's going on? But enough that's going to shake up the game. Like, yeah. where's the freaking, oh my god, I don't even remember. Did we have Pandora's box last year? No. No, okay. I didn't think we did either. We need some freaking Pandora's box up in this. Seriously. I would be so happy. And also, last Thursday, did you catch when Julie said, because this week is going to be jury starting, and she said that just because you're in the jury doesn't mean that you're out of the game, so maybe someone will be coming back, or, you know, if someone's coming back, I hope she lets us vote, and it's not a competition. Mm-hmm. Because uh, then someone I don't like might come back. Yeah. I agree. Although, last in Big Brother Canada, we probably wouldn't have said that we wanted Cindy to come back, and she won her way back in, and we were happy about that, because she was pretty entertaining in the time that she yeah. was back in the house. Because they come in, no matter what, the person's going to come in with a new outlook, right? Like, they're mm -hmm. getting that second chance, so you never know what a person's going to act like or, or do when they finally have that, that opportunity again. Plus, extra people will already be voted out and they basically just sat in the jury for a few weeks resting and relaxing and stress free and now they get to go back in the house and they're like ready to rock yeah so we'll have to see I I don't know it seems like that happens in pretty much every season now that someone comes back you know <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely nothing true. All right, so like yeah. uh, the fight between Clay, Johnny Mac, and Vanessa, Johnny Mac was like, "No, I said that," and Vanessa was like, "No, there's no way you didn't come up with that." So to me, I felt like she was basically calling him dumb. So like, <laughs> and then she was like, "Well, either y'all are gay lovers or y'all are related." So, like, what did you think? <laughs> That whole thing. Um, I I don't I don't know. I actually liked how Vanessa handled that because you know I don't think I think that someone got in his ear for, for sure to make him think that way. Like I don't think that he's dumb. I think that he knows that she's in an alliance with other people other than him. But I don't really see why she would go after him. I think that if she would have won HOH, I think she would have tried to get James out just because she's with Shelly and they just got Clay, or James just got Clay out, right? Yeah. Or I guess at the time, 
they didn't know that Clay had gone out. But either way, it would have been Shelly or Clay. So either way, you know, yeah. they want would have wanted to go after James. Yeah. But. I definitely, definitely agree. I don't know. It's getting crazy in that house. Big Brother house, it brings the crazy out of you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I think, uh, I don't know. I don't think that the house guests get as crazy as they used to be, though. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't got no one going up crazy, like, dick style with freaking pots and pans running around the house, waking everybody up, like, you know, or even Rachel telling everybody off saying, like, floaters get a life vest, or Janelle when she was, like, I don't even remember what she said. She's, like, something else. They were, she, like, threatened them, and she was, like, bitches, and then she just, like, walked away. Yeah, yeah like, nobody has like the balls to do anything it seems because it seems like as soon as you put yourself out there now you're a freaking target but back in the day in the older friggin seasons when it was freaking awesome mm -hmm. there was people doing it left right and center you know I don't know I just want an all-star season I want all of those amazing players to come back like oh my god I just want them to come back so bad yeah, I want an all-star season or either, like, fans versus favorites. That would be hella interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. But in the... I don't know. It would be also interesting, though, because a lot of the fan favorites are friends outside of the house. Like, I wonder how much of a difference it would make in their friendship or even the way they treated each other or who would align together because if all of them are friends and all of them are getting along and know each other so well it's like who's gonna go with who who's gonna backstab who because they're kind of all friends right so I don't know maybe mm -hmm. they have to be split that would be interesting mm-hmm Mm. It would. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's so red. <laughs> I know. No, seriously. I was out in the sun all day. Mm -hmm. And all day yesterday. My face is like burnt. I got like the worst farmer's tan in the world. So... It wasn't just because Rachel and Brendan were on, although I did tear up because I was super excited. Mm -hmm. But I'm also super red from the sun. Oh. <laughs> All right. So do you have any last yeah. words? Um, I hope the backdoor plan works for Vanessa because we don't know for sure yet if she will get put up as a replacement. And I'm excited to see the double eviction because I, I, I love double eviction uh, episodes because so much happens so fast and we get to see so many good competitions. So I'm excited for that, definitely. I'm hoping Shelly yeah. and Vanessa go home during the double eviction. Also, I like Jackie a little bit more. And I also like James. He's the only one who's had balls this season. I guess Becky's balls are growing now also because she put up Shelly. <laughs> so I'm kind of doing things. I know our producer, Shady, he really likes Becky, but I'm rooting for James. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck right now for who I'm rooting for because I just want – Steve to step up and be like this crazy awesome big brother player but until that happens I don't know who I'm gonna go with like obviously Johnny Mac because he's pretty awesome but I don't know I think that I think that my mind's gonna change a lot in the next few weeks seeing how everything goes down and who steps up you know yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I guess we should see. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. This has been another edition of the Big Brother Slap Show. Be sure to join us every Sunday at the same time at 9 p.m. Eastern. We will be back next week. I'm not quite sure who our guest is going to be. So I'm not going to say any names, but I think we will be having a guest. So just make sure you join us here next week. It'll be a surprise. Yay, we love surprises. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye.